Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have a new flight controller. Now, I don't really do much flight control reviews lately because everything is kind of ah. Uh, but this one is on a not really a new level, but it's something different and something really nice. And I can't wait to actually go out and test. So this is part one of the review where we're doing the overview. The reason for that is, is I'm currently in a move from moving from my office to a different office. And uh, you guys will see all that in the upcoming days. There's going to be a lot more CNCing projects, custom built X class frames. I have a lot of things planned. And also a uh, more ESC testing will be back again because I got more ESCs to test here. So that's going to be really interesting. But right now, let's take a look at this flight controller here. So it's using two gyros. Both of them are ICM gyros and they're 90 degrees tilted away from each other, if I remember correctly, or either 180 degrees. What this does is it kind of gets the average of both gyros here to give you the better overall result because something, some, sometimes a gyro can have a spike, which was really just not there due to some kind of an EMI or just due to some sort of uh, noise, or it could be just about anything thing or somewhat of a faulty gyro i'm not saying that they do come in faulty gyros but you know you just never know so this is really nice that they've done that it's called the thing sensor fusion so that's really cool they're using the f7 flight controller here uh they're using the baby one but that's totally fine for such a flight controller and again this is not an all-in-one flight controller it's just a basic flight controller now there's something i really like about this and um can you tell how simple the design is it's just so modular you got the gyros here, the gyros here, the capacitors that it needs right there, the capacitors that it needs right there. You have the, your crystal resonator and just everything that, you know, the, the um, what are they called? Some of the resistors you need for the flight control. It's so basic, so tiny, so light. It, I think it's meant for racers. Now, wait till I flip it to the other side. Look how they've done it. It's so cleanly designed. I am really liking this. I mean, the way they've executed this is absolutely phenomenal. I think one of these is a 3.3 volt regulator and one of them is a 5 volt regulator. I don't know what this is doing up here, but this could be a switching 5 volt regulator. I, it could be. I'm not sure just yet. I haven't really looked into it. And here also, if you take a look at this IC right there, uh, that's instead of adding an SD card, you're getting more memory than the default chips that come in with memory. So I don't know exactly how much just yet, but I'll probably leave it up on the screen here once I check the uh, model number of this IC. And as you can tell, we have the OSD here. It's really nice and just, oh my goodness, I just really love the layout of this. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to make it better. But what it means is it's going to be a lot easier to debug and fix if you ever needed to, which is something really nice. That's some, that's a huge plus in my book. But this is a personal opinion, personal preference type of thing. As you can tell here, we do have a lot of broken out pads. It's very light and I think it's meant towards racers. So this is what I think they're doing with this here. Uh, it's called the iFlight Success F7 Twin G. I know this thing comes in an F4 version and an F7. This is the F7. And they do have four millimeter holes here. And because they do provide you with rubber dampeners here as you can tell gummies right there so th these are really good gummies and they give you the wires you're going to need and the cables you're going to need all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the layout as well as the pad so we see here is the front and as you can tell it's pointing that way so that's really great because the usb will be up on the left and let's start from the bottom here let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom let me see if i can get just a closer shot here okay so from here we see we have the five volt in ground and we have the uarts we have uart one uart three uart four uart five 3.3 volt in a ground right here so if you're going to be using something that takes 3.3 volts such as a uh spectrum i think receiver then you probably set it up here in one 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 of the r's here probably preferably probably r5 if that's not being used for esc telemetry which we'll figure out in a bit here here we have the buzzer and led set up together so theoretically what you'd want to do here is you'd use the same 5 volt for the led and the buzzer but the grounding part would be different. So if, for example, here we would put the five volt for the LED and the buzzer, okay? We'd probably put those wires together. And then for the LED, you would ground it here. And then for the buzzer, you would ground that one right there because that's what will enable the buzzer. And here's the LED signal pin, which can be also remapped to whatever else you want. And now here, I think what they're trying to do on this side is this is where you would theoretically install your receiver. Uh, taking, taking into perspective that it's a 5 volt receiver, such as an FR Sky as well as a Fly Sky. You would, you know, ground 5 volt and then you have your R2 right here. So it would be on serial port 2, which either be your S bus or your I bus. Now, take something into consideration. This is an F7 flight controller, so it, you don't have a specific pad where you have to install S bus. It'll work on any RX pad, such as this right here. And also you have here T3 if you needed it for something else, if your receiver wanted to do something else with that. So that's really nice. So theoretically, what they're aiming for is that you would use uh, serial RX for your input from your receiver on this side, which would be on serial or UART2 here. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the board. All right, so if we take a look at the top of the board, we see we have our motor outputs. We have motor one, two, three, four, and then we drop back down here and then we go uh, five, six, seven, eight. So we have a total of eight motor outputs if you ever needed those. And what they're aiming for here, we see R5, that's where your ESC telemetry would go. Uh, so if you had ESC telemetry, you just want to install it right there. Now, if you had single ESCs uh, and you wanted ESC telemetry, you would put them all together and then you would go ahead and just stick it right there on R5. So that would be really nice. What I would do personally is I would just bring one wire out here and then bring in all four of the ESC wires, route them up together and connect them with that wire. So it'll keep the overall flight controller cleaner here. But you can do that as you please and whatever you want. Right above the R5, which is for ESC telemetry, theoretically, if that's what that's why it's here for, uh, you have the current. So if your ESC has some kind of current sensing other than ESC telemetry, that's where you'd want to install it or a PDB if you're still using a PDB nowadays. I highly doubt anybody is, but if you still are, that's where you'd put your current sensor, battery voltage and ground. So this is where you would power it, which is really nice. You can power it with battery voltage. Super awesome there. And here we're going to have the camera and as well as the VTX output here. So here we can see that we can give 5 volt in ground and video in for the camera. And I think this is to be able to control the camera's OSD right there. And if we take a, if we take a look at the bottom rows, we have ground battery voltage for your VTX. So make sure your VTX can take that battery voltage. And if we take a closer look here, we have the video output. So this would be the yellow line to your VTX. And here we have four smart ports. So here's the TX pad. It would be on TX2 here for some reason. Is it 2? Yes, it's 2. So this really doesn't make much sense. Now, if you're going to use TX2 here for your smart audio, then you're not going to be able to use the RX2 for your receiver. So I'd highly recommend you'd use your probably connect your receiver somewhere over here like on R1 then. So I, this is what I would do. I would actually get my receiver. I'd give it 5 volt ground R1. And I'll leave UART 2 for the smart audio if my VTX had smart audio. That's where I would set that up right there. Here these, I have no idea what they're used for. But probably bridging some things to enable you to do some other things. I'll check the documentation in a bit. On the bottom here, we have a connector for uh, the VTX if you wanted to use that. And we also have a connector here. That'll allow you to connect to some kind of an ESC instead of having to solder everything. But you do have both options here, which is something really nice. Now, overall, what do I think of this? I really like the design. I don't know how it's going to perform, but theoretically, it should perform pretty good. I don't know how well the coding side of this done or the sensor fusion is, is doing currently. Uh, it's going to be installed. I'm not on a new build. I'm, I'm probably going to set it up on one of my currently one of one of my pre-built quads that I, I like that I've built and see how well this is going to perform on it. So I think that'll be a pretty interesting uh, test because I would already know how that thing performs and then we can see if this does really good or is there some kind of a hiccups out of the box. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be really interesting here. And well, that's it guys. I'll have linked everything down below. Go ahead and check that out and uh, expect more videos and more ESC testing coming up very soon. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.